Now on this flight are 51 spacecraft, including CubeSats, Microsats, hosted payloads, and orbital transfer vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. Now, it might be worth mentioning that weather is currently red for liftoff at this time, but moving forward with our T0 of 11.48 p.m. Pacific time to see if we can find some good weather. Now, there will be a total of 36 deployments made between two deployment sequences. The first deployment sequence will begin around the T plus one hour mark and will last for approximately 20 minutes. We are expecting to lose ground station coverage partway through the first deployment sequence, so only some of our deployments will be visible today. However, when we gain coverage or ground station coverage, we do expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation over the nets. The second and last deployment will happen at the T plus two hour and 35 minute mark after additional second stage burns. And speaking of payloads, on board the Falcon 9 today, we have a main payload located at the top of the stack for our customer, Tubitak Uzai. The Imedja spacecraft is the fourth satellite manufactured by Tubitak Uzai, which is the space branch for the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey. Imedja in Turkish means collaboration or collective work, as it was a project that was worked on by several institutions and holds great significance in the Turkish culture. Now with that, here's a video highlighting our main payload. <laughs> I'm Soma Srivastava, a structures engineer here at SpaceX. On your screen is a live view of the Falcon 9, which is a reusable two-stage rocket, which rolled out to the pad and went vertical early this morning. Falcon 9 is kind of like two rockets in one, with the first stage and the second stage stacked on top of one another. A rocket can be defined as the engine, or the M1D rocket engine, or the vehicle, which is propelled by the engine, in this case, the Falcon 9 rocket. For a sense of scale, the two-scale the two-stage Falcon 9 stands about 70 meters tall, which is slightly taller than a 21-story building. What you're seeing on your screen are the four main parts that make up the rocket, the first and second stages, the black composite inner stage, which connects those two, and the payload fairing at the very top. Speaking of the fairing, the 51 spacecraft on board the second stage today are safely enclosed inside the large pointed structure at the very top of the rocket, which is the payload fairing. It's its job started. to protect them until the vehicle is outside of the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the two fairing halves separate to expose them to the vacuum of space. 
Right below the fairing, we have our second stage, which houses our single Merlin vacuum engine, or the MVAC engine, which will propel our payloads to their eventual destination in space. On today's mission, you might notice something a bit different, which is that we are flying with a shorter nozzle extension attached to our MVAC engine. Going forward, our teams plan to use this shorter nozzle when we don't need as much performance to get the payload to its final destination. Stage one, RP1 load complete. But don't worry, the larger nozzles are not going away forever, and we still plan to fly the full stage the full-sized MVAC nozzles on missions that require a more significant amount of thrust from stage two or ones that contain a heavier payload. So keep an eye out for that after stage separation. Moving on further down the rocket, below the second stage is the black carbon fiber inner stage. The inner stage connects the two stages and houses the center pusher that allows the first and second stages to separate during flight. It also houses the MVAC nozzle, which I was just talking about. And below that, we have the first stage, which we usually refer to as the booster. The first stage makes up the bottom two thirds of the vehicle and has nine M1D engines at the bottom. Those nine Merlin engines do the bulk of the work to get Falcon 9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one is the primary part of Falcon 9 that we recover, refurbish, and reuse for multiple flights, which allows us to bring down the cost of regularly launching rockets. At around two and a half minutes into flight, the first stage will separate and make its way back to Earth to attempt a land landing at landing zone four, which isn't too far from the launch pad. For those of you who are keeping track... Thanks, President, for strong back recheck. For those of you who are keeping track, today's mission marks the 10th flight for this particular booster, which has previously supported the Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich mission, DART, and seven Starlink missions. For today's mission, unlike typical Falcon 9 missions, we'll be performing a single engine entry burn and a three engine landing burn on the first stage after stage separation. This is due to the change of second stage engine performance with the shorter nozzle. So switching up the number of engines we light up during these two milestones on the booster during descent will allow us to more efficiently land on LZ-4. We've previously performed similar types of burns, most commonly on the Falcon Heavy side boosters. This will, however, be the first Falcon 9 first stage to perform these burns with this changed engine configuration to land back on land. It's also worth noting that we are predicting slightly higher winds during our landing attempt, but hopefully the weather will cooperate with us. So be sure to keep an eye out during both entry and landing burn to see if you can see the difference based on how many engines are lit up. At T minus three minutes and 33 seconds, the vehicle is healthy and we are currently tracking no issues. However, the, currently, the weather is currently a watch item and red, but we are planning on moving towards our planned T0 of 11.48 p.m. If for some reason we do not launch today, we have another opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Stage one lock load complete. Our goal with these missions is to provide small satellite operators competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, and flexibility. We're flying some really cool payloads on this mission, including several different types of Earth observation spacecraft, collecting greenhouse gas emissions data, hyperspectral imaging, student research projects, and orbit changing vehicles. It's pretty incredible how even the smallest satellites can make meaningful contributions to take care of, the, of planet Earth and our efforts to visit other worlds. And we're looking forward to providing a great ride to space for these 51 payloads on board today in just a few minutes from now. Now at this point, we have completed LOX loading on the first stage. We're coming up, coming up on LOX loading completion on the second stage in a few seconds here at the T minus two minute mark. And again, we are keeping our eye on the weather for T0.
Stage two, lock flow complete. There's that call out that we were waiting for. Liquid oxygen loading is now complete on the second stage. That means that Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with one million, one million pounds of fuel and kerosene uh, and liquid oxygen. And now we are clearing out the liquid oxygen line on the transport director. And that is why you see those white clouds that are taking over your screen there right now. And there you can see a better view of the venting. Next up will be Falcon 9 in startup. That's when the internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown. And that is at the T minus one minute mark. Falcon 9 is in startup. Good call out. Now we're just waiting for the final call from the launch director. On countdown one, hold, hold, hold. Launch abort has started. Now, as you just heard, the launch director, we have had a hold, hold, hold on the countdown. As launch director on countdown net, um, a manual hold was called um, due to weather constraints. Now, as you heard on the nets, the launch director did call a hold, hold, hold on the countdown today, and that was due to weather. We have been keeping an eye out on that. The vehicle and payload remain in good health, and our next launch opportunity is tomorrow at the same time at 11.48 p.m. Pacific time. As always, thanks for watching, and we hope to see everyone back here for our next attempt.